We are live. Hello to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. The amazing Worley is going to share into the groups. So thank you to Worley for that. You're a, an absolute star and a gem. Thank you. And a warm welcome to everyone. And we're so delighted you chose to join us today, whether live or on the replay. And I know some people have set their alarms really, really early in Eastern and Pacific time zones. So thank you, especially to you, to being on live. Today, it's my pleasure to be joined by a man who has given his life and service to others. Over the past five decades, he's helped over a million people to improve their lives in a myriad of ways. From giving TED Talks or other workshops and seminars around the world, to writing 23 published books and a multiple best-selling author at that. He had a thriving one-on-one -on -one practice for near two decades and has also been a consultant to band members of Pink Floyd and Madonna, to name drop only a couple of celebrities he's helped. In the last 18 months or so, he's birthed the AMP trilogy of programs using cutting-edge technology, a world-class narrative which helps you to manifest like a magician, improve your health, relationships, finances, and cultivate an ever-expanding awareness of life and the the miracle of it all. In short, you discover that you are a miracle and each and every unfolding moment is also a miracle. This embodied understanding alone is a major game changer. Join me and give it up for welcome, welcoming the mighty barefoot doctor, everyone. Stephen Russell, it's such a delight to host you again, my friend. This is a delight to be hosted by you, fabulous Danny Green. I feel I must, I keep meaning to say this, <laughs> that million people thing. That was my little boy, it's my internal little boy calculating how many treatments I've done, one-on-one -on -one treatments when I had my practice. And it was over a million, you, know, you can calculate by time and the amount of days that I've had that stuff. But I think I probably, I'm not, this is not my picking myself up, probably not a lot more than a million people, but the millions because of the broadcast nature of what I do. Um, and I need to remember that sometimes. It's important because I'm, I'm walking around going, I haven't done enough, I haven't done enough, I haven't done enough. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. You know, that the drive of the creative madman. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I was thinking that actually that with, with all the, the webinars, the live broadcast, the live streams, interviews, YouTube interviews, et cetera, et cetera, must be must be well over the, the million that we first suggested. Doc, I'm just gonna go to the comments and uh and I'll bring you straight back in, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, we've got Elizabeth Van Lewin. I haven't seen you for a long time. Welcome, my friend. I hope you're well. It's so lovely to see on here. We've got Juliet Owens. Good morning, Stephen and Danny. Good morning to you, Juliet. Hello, Juliet. You too. How are you? We've got Kathy Shooter. She's seen. I'm very happy to be to be here live for a change. We're happy to have you here as well. And we've got Deline, who was tuned in, set her alarm for five o'clock in from New York City. She says, "Okay, I'm awake and I'm here. Good for you, Deline. Thank you for joining us." As always, we welcome comments, questions, observations as we are running through. Right, just to start off, um, Stephen, you did a fantastic live webinar with, with Willie on Thursday night, which I was very glad to be in attendance. And uh, you actually, I just wanted to, to sort of talk about that a little bit, what it was you were doing and, and moving forward, how things are going to be. So over to you, my friend. Yeah, but first I've got to say, it's not really about how many people you help, is it? It's about how much you can help just one person, really. Because yeah. for each person you help, that's it for them. I mean, it doesn't matter how many others you help, right? It's so sort of like if you can just help one person, really help one person. I think that makes your life worthwhile. Just that, isn't it? Yeah. And that help doesn't have to even be huge. It could be a smile that would stop someone from committing suicide. You know, you just never know. Do you? You know, I mean, you walk down the street, somebody could be thinking of killing themselves. You might give them a smile of recognition and encourage them, makes them go, actually, maybe it's not that bad. You just don't know, do you? You don't know. Um, yeah, the webinar was really nice. It was, uh, the idea was to, you know, like with the miracle, the volume three of Ant, it's, uh, it's really important to me to um, keep up awareness of it because I really feel for it. I think it's a really good tool. I mean, the whole Ant thing is a, a really good tool for people. And, uh, you know, in this busy, noisy world, if you don't keep some kind of message coming through, people might not, you know, they'll forget about it, which would be a shame. This is not just for my personal, you know, uh, confirmation. I wasn't wasting my time either. You know, I already feel I've justified that. But the 
that I want people to have it because it's brilliant. And I'm always finding looking at ways to make the thing available, to make the gist of it all available to, to everybody. Um, and uh, the webinar was really a go at that. Like I love doing like this, doing free events that anyone can come to, everyone can come to. Um, there's no transactional element to it. Um, um, you, you, be, uh, you can love, you can love, you can give love to everybody, and that's what we're here to do primarily. So that's what it was. It was really introducing you to, it's so simple, uh, and the, the miracle as a metaphor is, is really powerful. If I remember, like I could be walking around worrying about whatever people worry about. We all worry about stuff, you know, we create a story in the forebrain to make sense of the feeling of animal fear that we'll feel in the belly, understandably, from time to time. And, uh, and the story can become a real worry. You really could, we could storytell it so we convince ourselves. And uh, if I stop that and just go, this is a miracle, my existence is a miracle. And actually, I'm a miracle. And the people that I'm thinking about, they're a miracle. And all the people in the world are a miracle. And everything that happens is a miracle. In other words, it's a, a manifestation from nothing, a wonder to behold. It's inexplicable and ineffable. And by just reminding myself, this is a miracle, I'm a miracle, this is all a miracle, it completely transforms the situation in that moment. But it also does it progressively, exponentially more under the surface as you're going along as well. And uh, if you repeat it, keep repeating it, and you've got the discipline to do that, your life will transform into one of being a miracle, based on the idea that, um, that the reality, the, the world, is a mirror to you. So that as you're seeing it internally, is how it will show up for you. I mean, quantum physicists have proved, proven that. It's not just a metaphysical idea, it's also quite a practical one. That the observer affects the field, and what you choose to focus on within the field will become amplified, will grow as a force, and eventually take over the whole show. So if you're focusing on the miracle, that's what will happen. The miracle will take over the show. Everything becomes miraculous. Things just happen. I mean, it is anyway. It's just what you're focusing on highlights it, it activates it. And it's a very beautiful metaphor. It's like more than a metaphor, really. I mean, it is, for me, it's an axiom that is unassailable. So that, I think that's what it was about. I'm trying to get people to share their uh, their experiences a bit. Slightly clunky, that, because the, the webinar format still sometimes doesn't really lend itself to that kind of slick, quick kind of, hey, how are you doing? And they come on. So there's always a bit of a delay and a fumbling about but, um, you know, that's part of the fun of the internet, really, isn't it? That kind of like the homespun element to it makes it human. But it was nice to connect with people. I want to do it more because I want to hear back from people. You know, I do the satsang, and I'm calling them the miracle satsang now because I'm into the miracle. Um, and that, but that's me delivering a, a, a meditation, you know, for people. The, this webinar, like I call it like a miracle meeting, is for everyone to talk and to share. And I think, that it could develop into something lovely. That's the that's the plan. Yeah, the, there was lots of things I loved about it. Uh, I got to see Worley and yourself. Worley was co-host, and I believe it was for the first time she'd done that. And what a great mm. job she did! You also opened the floor so people could actually speak. Actually, um, instead of just typing, they could actually voice their question or feedback to you concern, concerning amps or uh, etc. So it was extremely interactive, even more so than this. Um, for those watching and they want to know how they could be on the next one, uh, how could they do that? Well, I reckon the most efficient way of doing that is to join, subscribe to my mailing list, which is at bethandoxyworld.com. Um, to be honest with you, I've never actually done it myself, so I don't quite know where the button is, but it's somewhere on there. Um, <laughs> that you subscribe to the mailing list at bethandoxyworld.com. And then, then I'll inform you. And the things I send out are not irritating. Well, I mean, I would say that, I guess. But they're well written and they're really fun to read. You know, they're generally, you would pretty much always have a technique that you can play with. So, you've got, you know, you're not just being assailed with words. I think they're not. And, and Wordy does a beautiful job, a masterpiece of, of the presentation on all the newsletters that go out. And then you'll know when I'm going to do the next one. Yes. So, like you see, that's the most efficient way. And, and you see the doc sends out a, a newsletter and words of wisdom and techniques and cool things um, every week. And you get loads of value just from being on his list. And as you see, you'll get to find out when the next satsang is. You'll get to find out 
on the next webinar for um, the Miracle is and lots of cool things that you've got going. You've got a retreat coming up in June. Is it June, Doc? No, it's September. 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 Yeah. Your pardon. You get to find out what workshops. You did a recent one in Ramsbottom, for example. So you get to find out all the, the juicy stuff as well. Ramsbottom um, sounds juicy, doesn't it? Yeah. It sounds a bit <laughs> disgusting and juicy, right? But it's actually really not disgusting at all. It's, it's a cool place. I went, yeah. as you know, the first time ever, and there's nothing disgusting about it it's, it's actually really a really lovely place for the great Isn't it? Um, yeah. yeah it's just going to go to the the comments we've got kathy was saying free events are a real lifeline they keep people um going so in turn they can support others it's really appreciated agreed kathy uh, nice to say we've got bob my friend bob he's saying me too He's in the Eastern Time Zone as well. He's up at 5 a.m. to be here live. We appreciate your presence, Bob. We do, Bob. We've got Grace Grieve. She's saying, morning, boys, from Grace and Sam Whitaker in sunny Wales. There must be holidaying out there. Hello, so Grace and Sam. And we've got Sarita, I hope Sarita, I hope I pronounce your name right. Wilson, she's saying, always good to be present with Steph, with Stephen Bearford, doctor. Nice one. Morning to you. So right there, we've got Joy Taylor. You're saying hi, Danny. Has this been shared in the app group? I couldn't see it on there. It took me a while to find this live stream, just in case others can't find it. Um, Willie said she was going to share it in the app group. Um, if she hasn't, I'm, I'm not quite sure what's happened. Maybe she's doing a few other things. But I'm pleased you found this live stream anyway, Joy. Good to have you here. All right. So the first question, Doc. It's kind of following on from a question we had, as we do, we often email each other, and it relates to, to healing issues generally. Mm -hmm. um, some seem to clear up with positive intervention, energy healing quickly, mm -hmm. and but others seem to, to drag on and drag on indefinitely despite healing efforts. You know, going to see practitioners. Could you talk a little bit about why that would be? Why would some just go quickly and others just seem to drag on and on indefinitely? <laughs> like, seriously, I haven't got a clue. But, um, I don't think anyone has really. It's so complex. But it seems to me, I mean, I just had an experience of that, as you know. I had a uh, two split back with you know, bites on my leg that caused the crisis and it's taken since July. It's still healing. I mean, they're nearly gone now. I've got this brilliant dot cell here. She's an amazing dermatologist. And since I've been seeing her, she hit the right medicine, did the right stuff, scraped it right, and it's almost sorted. But why did it take so long? I, this is the thing that's been, I've never known it can take so long to, to go. And I think it, on some level, apart from, you know, all due respect to the spider, for being so powerful and giving me a message, what was it I was needing about this? And it was like, I needed, I have needed and still do, a constant reminder of my mortality, because that gives me perspective. <coughs> Excuse me. I need to remember that I'm going to die. Because if I can remember I'm going to die, I remember to stay alive. Do you know what I'm saying? I remember to be here properly. And I remember not to get my knickers in a twist about bullshit and to keep my focus on what's important. And that is not usually about how good I look or how much people might like me or anything like that. It's more about what I'm creating and how it can benefit. And more importantly than that, I guess, is that I'm aware of my connection with the big presence at all times, which is eternal and which is in the state that you would in the realm that you go to when you're dead anyway i guess so uh, it's that reminder of what's really going on here that i need as a, a teacher or instructor in the dance ways and the purveyor of such powerful medicine as amps i need to be aware of where i am and who i am otherwise i'm kidding everybody it wouldn't work you know so i i needed that but maybe that's why it's taken so long on some level i remember going to the bristol cancer center when i was used to used to work with them for years, brilliant people. And uh, uh, the last time I went, because it closed after that for whatever reasons, um, I, I used to talk to all the doctors and I remember saying, you know, it's funny guys, I've been coming here for what, 10 years and, uh, you know, I, when I remember when I first came, I was so full of, I was so sure of it. I knew what caused cancer. I knew what made people get better. I knew, I understood that, you know, cancer came from bottled resentment, unexpressed, you know, trauma, whatever, whatever. I knew that if people were positive, they'd get better, and if they weren't, they wouldn't. I said, but you know, 10 years later, I haven't got a clue. I've seen people get better who are the biggest negative miseries ever, 
I've seen people with the most positive spirits die. I've seen, uh, you know, people who have no resentment whatsoever, the kindest people ever get it because of genetic reason or whatever, whatever. You know, and, and it's uh, it's too simple to say this is because of that. It's so complex all of it, but you could say it comes down to, well, what makes it interesting is if you assume that your soul, your eternal aspect, chose all the conditions of this incarnation before you came here. Therefore, you're not a victim of any of it. And you don't have to know why it did that. It did it because it needed to forge you into whatever you needed to be to move on to the next stage, for whatever reason. And not to try and even understand it would be quite respectful of the, of the enormity of the, of the conundrum, really. Don't even try and understand it. And bit by bit, it starts coming through to you. But, I mean, I, I think really, yeah, it comes down to if you've still got something lingering, it's because on some level you need it there to remind you of something. There's a, something you've got to get about it. For me, it's like I need to know I'm going to die. Uh, for other people, I don't know what it would be, but that could be. And there's some part of you that needs it, maybe because it's better than the devil you know than the devil you don't as well. You know? Yeah. Great answer. Very humble and authentic. It reminds me of the expression or the saying, the more, I'm, the more I learn, the more I realize the less, was it? The more I know, the less I realize that I do know or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what was nice. I forgot to say the doctors, as one route came back, yeah, we don't either. <laughs> we don't know either. It was a really nice moment of like, you know, it's a mystery. I hope that's not going to upset people. <laughs> but they go to the doctor thinking the guys don't know what they're doing. Yeah, we're all human, aren't we? Yeah, I must admit, as a as a healer and inverted comments, comments, you know, sometimes it's a mystery to me is why some people, you know, one session, three sessions, five sessions, they're good to go. Other people, it just doesn't seem to, to work for whatever reason. But, but everything that you do, every intervention you make as a healer has a positive in, impact. And it might be just building up credit for when they see the person who seems to serve as the capitalist eventually, that all the stuff that everyone else has done will support that. It's not, none of it's wasted, none of it's wasted. Good energy output always is useful. I like that, I love that. Um, so we've got a question from Dawn. She's wondering about autoimmune, autoimmune disease generally, and in particular psoriasis. This condition has suddenly emerged from, from seemingly nowhere and, and mm. the querent is now middle-aged. So, have you got any experience, insights on autoimmune and psoriasis? Yeah, yeah, it's a horrible thing. I feel for you. That is horrible. However, you probably know about the uh, turmeric paste, don't you? Or if you if you mix up turmeric with water and you apply it topically, um, it, it's really kind of quite renowned for having a, a very, very good, a good effect on it. Um, but more to the point, and at a deeper level, um, psoriasis is obviously heat rising up to, to the surface, which means that the lung energy is involved, because the lungs control the skin. Why the heat would be building up in the lungs, though, would be because usually the kidneys, which are responsible for drawing energy into the body on the inhalation, are for some reason not receiving and processing that energy properly. So it's getting backed up in the lungs becomes heat and has nowhere else to go but come out through the skin in a sort of angry reaction. Um, and usually, in my experience, by strengthening the kidney energy, over time though, remember, there's no quick fix. Unfortunately, I really wish there was. Over time, um, the kidneys, as they get stronger, the, the, the energy input into the body becomes more efficient. The heat builds up less in the lungs and symptoms like psoriasis, but you know, asthma is another uh, symptom caused by the same syndrome. Uh, they they, re they get reduced um, until eventually you get a handle on it. And the kidneys are prone to weakness when you're afraid. I mean, we're all afraid, right? Okay, everyone's afraid. We're animals. You've got to be afraid to stay alive. But the anxiety that we manufacture ourselves in reaction to that fear that's, not, that's what's not healthy, and that's what affects the kidney. So when we get afraid, we don't know what to do with the fear, so we create a story in the foreground, and then we get scared of that story, which is obviously stupid, but we all do it. And that's called anxiety, and it's that that eats away at the kidney. So if you can learn to lean back in the back of your brain, 
into the sort of hunter-gatherer original mind where you can observe your mental processes. You can see that there's a story running there and you no longer have to subscribe to it compulsively. In which case, when you feel the fear arising in the belly, as you inevitably will, because we all do, just because we're animals, as I say, rather than create a story about it, you just go, ah, oh, there's fear, good, I'm alive. Keep breathing and it passes. And that in itself strengthens your kidneys. I mean, if you're, you're very welcome to contact me, uh, yeah, uh, do go uh, support at bedfordoxyworld.com and where you'll send me it if you want. I can go into it in more depth with you, maybe be a bit more helpful, uh, just, you know, a bit more specific with the advice. Thanks for that, Doc. So, turmeric paste and working on strengthening the energy in the kidneys. Thank you for that. Um, someone saying it was Joy saying that it hasn't shared into the AMP group and Worley saying it wouldn't let her. So I'm just going to check to see if it is in the AMP group. And if it's not, I'll just quickly do it now. Two seconds, please. Um, yes, it's in there. There you see. Thank you, Cathy. And I've just caught the comments as well. We've got Cathy saying I've shared it, I think, and you have. Thanks for that, Cathy. And Worley was just saying they wouldn't let her share it for whatever reason. But thanks for trying, anyway. Appreciate your help. We've got Grace is seeing Ram's bottom is certainly <laughs> certainly juicy, and we love having you here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, and we've got Joy was seeing that. Yeah, we've got a comment earlier. Right. So hmm, we had. I've had several people contacting me since your webinar on Thursday night and they were all intrigued about your technique, that your ninja technique, as I call it, that you shared to improve your physical vision and to achieve laser focus. And I know you said that it's used in martial arts to, mm -hmm. to, to sort of avoid all distractions. You know, you're totally present and in the, in the zone of what's ahead. I don't know if, if you'd like to guide people through it now or, if you want to do it at the end before the visualization, I, I don't know what, what do you think. What I'd say it, it'd probably be um, good to do it now. Um, th this is actually an example of what you get on the news desk because I actually written about this already for the news desk that's coming this this weekend as a theme because it was so so many people emailed to ask me how you could you repeat. I thought I'd stick it in words. So if you do join, if you don't get it now, you can always get it if you could subscribe to the newsletter. Okay. I'll, Am I talking a lot today, like more than normal? No, no, not at all. Okay. Am I talking a lot, though? Yeah, I do, don't I? But, I mean, you know, I've always had great respect for um, people who just don't say very much. <laughs> you know, you ask them a question, they give you a very succinct, simple answer, and they shut up. But I just have so much to say all the time. To, um, be, honest, to, to be honest, just briefly, I host a lot of these interviews, and, and I panic if I've got, like, 10 questions and I'm interviewing someone, we'll get through them in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something. Shit, that's the questions burn through. I've got to start like coming up with questions on the spot. So so I know with you, you know, we're always good to go. So so don't don't apologize for that. <laughs> All right. And what was the question? <laughs> oh yeah, the visualization, right. Well, um, this is very powerful and it's very good for your eyes, um, good for your physical vision, but it's also good for your uh, uh, inner vision, your ability to envisage things. Um, it's incredibly good for your focus, as Danny said, it's used in martial arts uh, to gather yourself, focus yourself, and uh, basically prevail upon an opponent, because when you've got this will basically coming out of you, it's very hard to withstand. So you have to use this responsibly, okay? Uh, you mustn't do weird things with it, be loving with it. Um, it's also really good if you want to send or give healing to somebody because it focuses your mind like that. Plus, if you're wanting to manifest something, you visualize something, you, you if you can, you, this will help you develop the focus that makes the visualization impact properly. Um, it's really powerful anyway, so this is how you do it. Um, there are variations of this, but this is, the, the, I think, the best one. You realize yourself and you um, imagine that you can breathe in light through your eyes. So what you're doing is you're breathing in two streams of light, one in through each eyeball, into the pineal gland, which is roughly level with your ear holes in the middle of your brain, if that makes any sense. So you, you, you're breathing in from uh, through your two eyes, two streams of very bright white 
beautiful, glorious light into the very center of your brain where the pineal gland is. Pineal, incidentally, means pine, like pine cone. So it's looked like, it looks like an upside down pine cone, and it is actually so, your so called third eye. Third eye is not the forehead, it's the inside, it's the pineal gland. This is spiritual eye. Now, breathe out from the pineal gland out through your two eyes, two streams of light, often to infinity. Uh, again, breathe in through the two eyes into the pineal gland and then breathe out through the, the two eyes into infinity, two streams of light. Now, imagine you have an opening in the middle of your forehead, just above the line of your eyebrows. And as you breathe in, you're breathing in one super strong, super bright stream of very concentrated, focused light through the middle of your forehead, directly into the pineal gland, into the midbrain, and then breathing out from the pineal gland in the midbrain, out through the two eyes, two streams. And finally, you breathe in through the, uh, the two eyes, into the pineal gland, two streams of light. Feel the light really collect there, and as you breathe out, this is the important bit, you now send that light from the pineal gland through the forehead in one concentrated stream into infinity. And you can imagine that if you wanted to heal somebody, it would be directed at them. If you want to manifest something, it would be you direct the light to the vision of that thing you want to manifest. If you were in a self-defense situation, you, you could direct the light kind of basically beyond where the opponent is so that you're kind of, you're moving them out of the way of your line of vision as it were, and clearing the space. And that's it, and that's all. Wow. My physical vision looks like this one's removed a, a net curtain. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. I think I'm looking at you in high definition now, and um, it's just, and I'm a lot more present and focused mm. than I thought I was before, but compared to how I am now, it's, it's a big difference. It's good shit, the Taoist stuff, isn't it? It's clever. It's so clever, isn't it? Definitely. Yes. Nice one. That one was for all the people who've asked, not least Isabel and Talene. There was a few people asked, so thanks for sharing that talk. What Excuse was my language, by the way. I'm very lax today. I'll be better behaved now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm sure you're in good company um, right this one is from our friend Sam Whitaker as you know she's got a chakra rooms in Ramsbottom which is like a therapy um, shop if you like she does workshops there and all kinds of things and therapy Cent center <laughs> therapy <laughs> center <laughs> what I'm looking for yes thank you and then um, she said that a question which pops up time and again from a client's it's to do with sleep issues, insomnia, and it often relates to the menopause. What were your thoughts on sleep issues and particularly that relate to the menopause? Um, well, uh, I mean, if you can't sleep because you're getting hot flushes, uh, the way to uh, deal with that, rather, you know, to have a go at dealing with it, because it's a ferocious energy. And if you're dealing with it naturally, uh, women's precious pills. Chinese pills, very good. Uh, Dong Kwai, very important, Dong Kwai. Very few people seem to know about it. They know about ginseng, which is like the male root that gives you the man's strength. But for the women, um, you need Dong Kwai. And it can be taken in capsule form, tincture form. You can even make soup with it from the root. But if you step but over, no, and this is not going to be a quick fix, but over a period of three months of taking it every day, the kidneys grow stronger in the way that they need to, to support the hormonal flux and uh, they settle and then they keep control of the what's called the heart fire which is part of their job and when the heart fire is contained you sleep you can fall asleep and you can stay asleep provided there's not anything else going on um but what i've been finding because since i've had this leg situation uh is the pain of it it's gone now but the pain is waking me up every two hours or every hour through the night and um I, you know i need to sleep so i i learned through the meditation of skill to bring myself right back to sleep really quickly as soon as I dealt with the, the pain. And um, you can do this, it, really, it does work. If you allow your mind to sink into the back of your head and to keep sinking backwards through the pillow, through the bed, and often through the ground and into infinity, you do the same with the weight of your body, you let the whole thing sink. You keep going down and down and down, back and back and back and back and back and back and back. And back. Before you know it, you're usually waking up in the morning a few hours later. One more thing, there's a point. You see my uh, 
my inside of my rib, I think, I'm going to get the bite there. Yeah. The wrist bracer is here, the little finger at the side of the wrist bracer. I'm pressing into the wrist bracer, into the pissiform bone, the palms, in fact, by pushing the tendon against the bone in quite a, a, you know, a solid sort of way. Do the same on the other side, and within about 10 minutes, it's like you've taken 2.5 milligrams of value. It, 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 it really, I'm sorry, it really, it really relaxes you. Yeah, it can get help you go to sleep. Yeah, yeah that's good. It, it beats sleeping tablets, which give you such a horrible hangover the next day. You feel yeah, the horrible. Oh, melatonin! If you can get melatonin, it's not it's not legal in the United Kingdom for some bizarre reason, but you can get it everywhere really online. It's legal in Europe. Another good reason for being in the EU and also America. We're very clever about these things. Melatonin, very good to help you sleep. Better than sleeping pills, and it does you good as well. Thanks for that, Doc. Some great tips there for sleeping. Um, the next one is, it's becoming more and more prevalent. It's Alzheimer's, dementia. Do you have any experience helping people with, with those debilitating, cruel diseases, either to slow it down or to reverse it or to, to protect against it? I do, uh, I do. I've worked a lot with it. Also, my, my grandmother, um, suffered with it and I was very close with her so I, I helped her a lot through I tried to anyway it, it can be pretty horrible actually um, the the things that you well the obvious thing is that if you can be learning a skill I I don't, I don't know if any of this is true or not I, I'm only saying this is from my observation it's all a bit hit and miss and varies from person to person but if you can be learning something that stretches your mind that encourages you not to succumb to the laziness that you might otherwise do if you could tired, for example. Uh, but something that causes your intellect to have to wake up and make a bit of an effort, that can help. A, learning a musical instrument, learning to read music, learning uh, a language. I know these things sound kind of pretty cliche and obvious, but it, it can really help. I, one of the things that I've always found working with people that seems to help is to get them to write their story down. Uh, so when I've been sitting with them, I'll kind of ask them about their lives and the interesting part of their lives that was you know the interesting bit for them and ask them questions get them talking about the story and then get them to write it get them to uh, dictate it that really helps a lot because they have a kind of a, a purpose that they want to share their wisdom you have to tell them you know we need your wisdom here give us your gift no, don't leave here without it and without doing that that seems to wake people up a lot and also if you can play songs on a on a, on a sound system of some sort for them of when they were about 20 years old, when the pop songs of their time basically. That has an amazing effect of bringing them back. What we're trying to do is increase neuroplasticity to forge new neural pathways through the brain. And that's what that's all about. That's the whole point of it all. You're creating new mental habits of thought and that forges new neural pathways that kind of overtake the old worn out dodgy ones that aren't serving anymore. I've got to tell you, I don't think I'm alone in this. I think even the greatest experts are only, you know, fishing about in the dark. I don't really kind of understand it. I don't know how it works, but it seems to me that when we succumb to conditions, no matter whether it's genetic or environmental or whatever it is uh, like that, it's a sort of the spirit saying, I've kind of had enough of this shit now. I'm sorry, I said, I'm sorry. I've had enough of this game now. I, I, I think I really want to leave here. But the conscious mind isn't ready to acknowledge that, doesn't want to let go. And so creates a sort of a, you could say a diversion. And I don't mean to be in any way dismissive, but it's a horrible condition. And it's a real condition, you're not imagining it. But um, it's somehow, everything is caused by the subconscious making a choice at the, originally. And so I do feel that it's a way, and if you can acknowledge that, and if the person can acknowledge that, it eases it off quite a lot. Because then somehow you're in command of the process. You know, it's just like an acknowledgement that, yeah, I'm kind of kind of getting out of it because I've kind of had enough of it a bit. And, and that's all right. I'm allowed to do that. Give people permission. They seem to relax into it. Or have more fun. The more fun they can have with it, the better. Most of the problem with all illnesses is that people feel obliged to not have any fun anymore. And everyone treats them in a non-fun way. But fun is the greatest healer. Laughter, fun, enjoyment, playing like a child. So you get people playing like a, like a child, 
I visit my mother whenever I go to England to give her acupuncture. She's 86, she's quite deaf, and that makes you a bit, you know, distant, a bit removed. She's a lovely, lovely woman. But could be inclined to go a bit dilly at times. And so I, I play with her, you know, we have fun together, make her laugh, and then she springs back. And I say, you know, you're a strong woman. She's like, a strong woman, and she is, she's back then. You know, but otherwise you can go a bit vague, you know. So it's, yeah, it's all about having fun. It's all it is, really, ultimately. <laughs> what a good thing to say. I, I'm a bit self-conscious today. I don't know why. It's all right, isn't it? It is. You can't, you know, um, you, you can't be all things to all people every day. You know, every, you're going to change True. to broadcast. Um, sometimes we have a good laugh. Sometimes it's a bit more serious. The question's obviously a bit more serious today, but it's still vitally. Um, it's of great... <laughs> can't find my own words. It's, it's a, you're offering great content, insights, wisdom. In particular, um, the, the last queer, to be honest, was one of my questions. It's impacting my family at the moment. So oh, there's some, some lovely words of wisdom and insight in there. So thank you for me personally. No, my pleasure. Just going to go to the comments. We've got Tasia. Hi, Tasia. She's seen awesome. Thank you. So good to see you here as well. Yeah. Um, and Carol Foley saying, good morning, gents. You're sorry, late for joining. That's fine. We'll forgive you. I'm already teasing you. Um, nice to see you. And we've got Soretta is saying, I know I now have chronic fatigue with low cortisol and wonder if it's my adrenal gland. Any ideas for getting energy back? I've had several brain scans and my pituitary is left is left leaning. Any ideas? Uh, yes, yeah, Serena. Yeah, you're right. That when the cortisol is when you deplete it in cortisol, which is the fight, flight, freeze hormone, it's, it's uh, because your adrenals have been pumping too much of it out over too long a period of time. It's what most people are suffering from uh, in a state of kind of permanent fight, freeze, please, uh, uh, you know, like low grade, like, like that on edge. Um, uh, it's an addictive chemical, cortisol, a bit like cocaine. So we tend to release it into the system every, it, it lasts 12 seconds, that's the hit. It's a shit hit, I mean, it's not like, it's like nicotine or coke, it's, you know, nasty. Um, but it's a hit, it's stimulation. So we kind of keep triggering it by making ourselves afraid, like, ooh, 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 like that. And, um, th that eventually poisons the body. It's no good, you know, it's a bad drug. And um, the, the, the key to reversing it, because you can, is to picture yourself. Oh, yeah, when, it happens because you arch the back, believe it or not. This squeezing of the adrenal glands that pumps the cortisol, you do it by arching the back. Very subtly and internally, but you arch the back. That you know, like I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for trouble. Arching the back. The the if you can do the opposite and push back against the kidneys, so push the back of your back outwards behind you, that relaxes the kidneys and it encourages the cortisol to settle inside the adrenals. And you know, you, you you understand that adrenals means adrenal on top of the kidney, literally. It's part of the kidney complex. So that's what I'm talking about. Kidneys. Um, the other thing that really, really helps a lot is that when cortisol has been pumped into the system, uh, the amygdala, which is like a pair of testicles hanging down um, either side of the pineal gland in the midbrain, uh, they shrivel up like a man on a cold day. And if you could then visual, go into the back of your head and picture the amygdala dropping nice and hanging, nice and relaxed and warm, you know, like two testicles that are relaxed on a warm day rather than the other. That really, really helps the system immeasurably. Um, it's a really important visualization. You go in the back of your head, you picture the amygdala all shriveled up, dropping and hanging nice and relaxed and crown. And that that relaxes the whole body, allows the cortisol to go back into the adrenals, and, or at least for them to not pump excesses and excessive amounts of it. And that in itself might really help the chronic fatigue because chronic fatigue does come from that of course you know that's exactly what it is and uh, the the way to to, to uh, change it is to build up the kidney energy essentially at the root of it all it's not an easy one though i mean it's a very complex condition that one it's very subtle as well so you have to really 
uh, play with it. I, I found that most people I treated with it, there is some level of anger that they weren't aware of. But if that can be expressed, if that can come out, it seems to have a major shift, makes a major shift happen in the healing process. Um, quite often, you know, like I was saying with the, the dementia, it's it, at some level the subconscious is saying, right, I've had enough of this game. Um, with chronic fatigue syndrome, at some point, there would be a, a choice in the subconscious level of like, oh, I need a break, I need, I need a break from all this. And the reason will be, in my experience of working with people, something that re makes you really angry that you just simply couldn't tell the people or the situation, I'm angry, that's not fair. You had to swallow it. And you would, and it really beat you down, it defeated you in that moment. And, and, that, and, it, and the reaction to that is usually what I, in my experience, causes people, ah, oh, I don't want to play this game anymore. I've had enough, I'm not playing this game. And, and that, it, 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 so that is interesting to acknowledge, I think. I don't know what you do with it, but if you can, if there is any anger towards anything, somehow or other acknowledge it, that might actually start a process off as well that could be very useful. But obviously I don't know, you're not seeing me, so I'm just guessing. If that, none of that applies, just take it with a pinch of salt. Some awesome words of wisdom on autoimmune disease generally. Thank you. You always crack me up when you talk about the, the amygdala when it relaxes and looks like a pair of testicles and all it never ceases to, to crack me up. Right. Um, right. I think we've got time for one more. So Isabel is asking, how, right, she says he has a question that's just popped into my mind. I'd love to hear the doc's perspective on how we can relate to the ones we love without engaging in power or control games. Usually we have plenty of old patterns in place, especially with family or romantic partners, and buttons and control games get triggered all over the place. How we can what work with, as you say? How we can sort of interact with, with yeah. um, others that we love without playing mind game, control games getting triggered. Good question, Isabel. You do ask good questions, and it's a difficult one. It's, it's a tricky one because you are triggered at a deep kind of habitual level you go to go back into childhood patterns of behavior around people that you've met and even with uh, a partner uh, there's a lot of the child comes into that doesn't it in the interaction and that's where we get triggered is at the child level the only antidote and believe me i'm no expert doing this in real life myself i don't know anyone who is um uh, the uh the only thing I found that works for me is that when I am reacting to the person in front of me, I'm in the front of my body and I, uh, 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 I feel threatened. I'm in that kind of, uh, uh, kind of mode. When I go in the back of my body, I've got the, uh, I, I can, I'm in command of the realm and I observe myself getting irritated in the front. And rather though then be compelled to act out from that, I have the option and I'll exercise the option which is, I'll desist from reacting here. And remember that that person is, is uh, difficult for me because they're in pain. If they weren't in pain, they wouldn't be expressing anything other than what made me feel happy, what made everyone feel happy. But, you know, everyone's in pain. They're in pain, bless them, and have compassion for them. Also, knowing that when I'm in my back, I'm the big presence. When I remember the big presence in the back of the other, and I somehow find myself communing directly with them. The personality aspect sort of falls away within a few minutes, usually. And the part of them that was really irritating me stopped irritating me. But like I said, it's complex because if they see you're doing that, they'll go, stop doing that hippie stuff. I know what you're, you know, you get that as well. And it's not that straightforward. But so you have to be discreet about it and you have to really work on it. And it takes a long time. But it does eventually um, happen. You, you do eventually find yourself not taking the other personally. You see it all from a transpersonal perspective. And that's what we've got to aspire to and be patient enough and diligent enough to work towards it. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Beautiful answer. I, I smiled because I thought that wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad answer. <laughs> yes. Here's what I prepared earlier. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to give Sue Ratley a shout out. She did ask a question, but I think a part we answered it um, in a, an exchange yesterday in one of the Facebook groups. And she just wants to thank you for the discount on I'm following through the miracle. She's saying this is day two. 
I'm excited to be a part of this journey with with everyone here and yourself, Doc. So it's just thanking for the, the generous discount that you, you've given me. Oh, bless you. That's a lovely thing to say, Sue. Thank you for buying it. I really wish you great with it. Great, great results. Thanks. So if you'd be so so generous to guide to guide us all on a one of your beautiful visualizations, I was thinking I always meditate for the greater good of the group beforehand and the, the word that came up this morning was forgiveness. Well that's self-forgiveness, forgiveness of others. If you can release some of that, it just allows so much more energy in in for you to use in other ways. And forgiveness of for what though? Um well I guess I guess people have their own their, their own um <laughs> is that a bit too broad, is it? Uh, well, I mean, I'm just wondering, forgiveness for you, for um, uh, forgiving yourself for not being perfect, forgiving others for being human, or well, forgiving yourself for being human, really, isn't it? That sounds like a plan to me, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Uh, if you, <laughs> if you, um, uh, relax your body uh, you'll find that the energy the weight of the, the head and the thoughts wants to naturally drop down into the lower part of you and settle on your pelvic floor kind of collecting in the lower belly area so you allow it to do that allow the weight of your your head your shoulders and all the thoughts in your head all the feelings in your chest let the weight of all of that drop down into the lower abdominal area sit on the pelvic floor and uh, let that feel make you feel like you have more gravitas a bit like one of those wobbly dolls that when you push them over they just swing back around and come up right again you know you become unpushable in other words unpushable over oh, oh. and now um with that kind of sinking sensation you might find yourself slumping so to preclude that because we don't want to slump we want to be upright and therefore dignified, which is the true meaning of dignity, it means upright. Um, imagine that a kindly being, a sort of angelic presence, is holding the sides of your head from behind, standing behind you, holding your head, and they're pulling it upwards to give more length at the back of the neck and make the chin sort of drop into the, the chest a bit more. So your, your head is being lifted upwards, and rather though than, than allow the lower part of your spine to rise up as well you make that sink down along with all the weight of the body so the sacral bone at the base of the spine is like your anchor and it's holding you it's holding you to the ground but the head is floating upwards and upwards and upwards a bit like uh, your spine is a bit like a snake being charmed out of this basket by a snake charmer and also it has that sense of fluidity so you, you get you allow yourself to feel the sort of gyrating spirally motion that would come with the with the snake's movement, that, that kind of unwinding fix. It's not all rigid. Then allow your shoulders to drop and to broaden out, so you kind of feel broad across the chest. With your mind, push your weight back into your kidneys inside the body, like you're pushing into the kidneys. So rather than arching your back, you're doing the complete opposite. And notice that when you do that, it makes you feel a bit more settled, a bit more secure. In the front, where the chest is, broaden out and get a feeling that you're exposing um, a, a secret diaphanous veil covered um, opening uh, behind which is a cluster of beautiful heart colored jewels, love colored jewels emitting a beautiful love-coloured light and a beautiful love-coloured fragrance. Uh, in, in other words, to represent the beauty of your soul, which is unique to you. And the purpose of you being here is to share this beauty in your soul as best you can, as it is the purpose for everyone being here. Uh, breathing slowly, you become aware that in your uh, mission to share the beauty in your soul, you've inevitably uh, express ugliness at times as well because of the yin and the yang of all things manifest there's always two sides to every every coin and 
uh, so that you're a beautiful being with beauty in your soul but for various reasons at certain times you haven't expressed beauty but expressed the opposite now you can keep punishing yourself for doing that or you can acknowledge that that is inevitable for anyone or anything manifest in the material world there will always be the two sides but what you focus on grows so rather than be erasing yourself you can use all of that energy instead to inform the intention, the aspiration, to focus on the beauty in your soul rather than the ugliness. And then the beauty will grow, and by and by, it eviscerates the ugliness pretty much altogether. And this is the, the first thing, that you're accepting yourself, you're sitting in the back of you, you're looking at the front part of you, where the choice between being beautiful or being ugly occurs, you're acknowledging that there have been times, and might well be times again, where you express a bit of ugliness. And not because you're bad, not because you're evil, because you're human, you're manifest, you're in the material world. Therefore, it's inevitable. You can't have beauty without ugly. So uh, you accept that this is the case, but you're focusing on uh, electing to transmit and radiate the beauty in you rather than the ugly. So that takes care of the guilt, uh, the, 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 the feeling that you need to be punished. And you can stop punishing yourself. And you can even say to yourself as you sit back here, right, that's it. I decided I made this choice. I'm no longer punishing myself for anything. I accept myself as I am. And I'm focusing on the beauty in my soul because by doing that, it grows and everything else will be uh, vanquished in that sense. Then you come to contemplate those people in your life who you are holding some kind of grudge against, whether it's an overt one or a secret one that you're hardly aware of yourself, become aware of those people, persons standing in front of you, uh, see them standing in front of you, and be aware that whatever they've done to you, they didn't actually do to personally hurt you. They did it because they were living out their process. And they were living out their process as best as they could for them, according to their state of evolution at that time. If they'd have done it better, they would have done, just like you would have done things better if you could have done it this time. And understanding that what they've done is not was not intended personally to hurt you. It was just them doing their life as best they could, and you had to fall uh, victim to their, their process at the time. Um, and if you can see that in the back of them, the accepting, loving part of them in the back of them, and somehow make a connection from the back of you to the back of them, and make some gesture of, okay, I relinquish any desire to exact revenge on you from now on. I let you go. I realize that what you did wasn't personal. If you could have done it better, you would have done. And you see them acknowledge that with relief. Thank you for acknowledging that. And notice somehow the front part of them seems to transform and what you were seeing as being despicable, you're seeing now as being something to have compassion for, a fellow human suffering, doing the best they can, believe it or not. And in this moment, there's a healing has occurred. By doing this, a healing has occurred. If you look inside your body now, you'll notice that there's a lightness in the chest, an expansiveness, like there's a bigger area inside the chest than there was before, because it's opened to your heart. Um, you've divested yourself of the pocket of poison that you were holding on to in the heart area that you're no longer holding on to. So you benefited yourself and them as well. Now finally, if you can wish them well, wish them well, wish them great success and joy rather than wishing them the opposite, that will bounce back at you, multiply, and great joy and success will be yours to enjoy henceforth. And if you like that, smile, clap your hands and go, yes, I love that. I'm with it and come back. Oh yeah, when I'm going to say come back, I mean um, flap your eyelids about a bit, wriggle your fingers, wriggle your toes, wriggle your ears, wriggle your nose, and draw yourself into the habitual, familiar waking state, yet transformed by having a lighter load to carry. Beautiful, as always, Doc. Thank you for facilitating. You're a beautiful man.
That's why. You are. That's why I call you the fabulous Danny Green. You are. <laughs> Thank, you welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. We've got a comment. I'm just going to bring it up. It's from Soretta. She's seen thanks for the visual for cortisol help. She loved that. I yeah. totally think that I'm finally having to deal with some major issues that happened when I was young. So onwards. Thanks for all the help over the years. The retreats in Urbino and your books. Visit Whitstable. So oh, it's you. How nice. Nice to see you. Danny's gone now. All right. I've gone, have I? Am I still here? All right. I don't know if um, the doc seems to have frozen. Yeah, I don't know if you're still there, but if you are, bye. <laughs> bye. Um, all right. So, obviously, we lost the doc. If you want to check out more of his work, just visit barefootdoctorworld.com. Plenty of cool stuff on there. Get his mailing list, see his trainings, and, uh, and all the exciting stuff he's got going on. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Much love to you all. And until the next one, take care. Bye bye.